Bates, well, good morning, everybody, mm -hmm. okay. and welcome to another beautiful day here at the gathering. No. <laughs> I don't think so. We're about ready to start, so uh, let's pray and we'll get this service started off right. Dearly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can be here and worship you. I uh, thank you uh, for your people. Your people who, are, who got here safe in the snow, who... Uh, Worship you today, and I pray we might just take this seriously. Like, there's so much going on in the world, but worshiping you is still important. And I pray that uh, we might be a service of worship this morning. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, this morning I got a few songs, and good that uh, we did in the gathering room with no words. And honestly, all these songs make sense more sense now than they did. But um, lots of songs that you've probably heard before and probably sang in church a hundred times. Um, reason being is we're kind of, uh, we're going into Communion Sunday today. We're going to a time probably you guys have celebrated hundreds and hundreds of times before. But just like the songs we sing and sometimes the um, actions we take to worship God, we let them get stale in our hearts. Um, and I'm as guilty as anyone about this. We let uh, Communion become some bread and some um, juice that we take every once in a while. and But what we are remembering is much more powerful than that. What we remember at church, what we remember when doing communion is much more powerful than that. And what we sing in these songs is much more powerful than just to let it go by the wayside. So as we sing these songs today, you might hurt them a lot, but sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes we need to sing the songs that we've heard a lot and listen to the words that we might gloss over otherwise. Right? So, let's sing some songs today that probably are a little bit familiar. Sorry about that. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Yeah. 
my capos, get you a lot smoother. <laughs> To the Lord our God and King, love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. You know, uh, this last song, less, I wouldn't say, it's less recognizable than the first two, 100%. But, um, and, and some of you may know the word, some of you may not. Um, regardless, I still think this is one of my favorite modern-ish songs. Granted, we're talking, what, 2012, 2013, this came out. But modern-ish communion songs. It's called Love Ran Red. It's just a really good understanding of what we're celebrating. I think. So if you don't know the words, that's fine. If you do, cool. But I think they're beautiful, and I think it really encapsulates what we're celebrating. So, as we go and sing it today. There's a place where mercy
Thanks, Blake. Um, any any things uh, anything that you're really thankful for today? Good things that are happening. Thankful for babies. You <laughs> are. What else? Thankful for the new year. Thankful yeah. for the new year. 2022. It's hard to believe. I'm thankful that um, Stella's getting her staples out were less traumatic than putting them in, and that Kayla was there uh, for. Uh, anybody have uh, family time uh, over New Year's? And yeah, good deal. Do we have some prayer requests we want to mention? As always, pray for the church this week. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Uh, and we need to pray especially for Mark and and uh, Jan's, Jan's sons. Uh, the funeral is on, on Tuesday, so we want to just pray that God would give comfort to those that mourn. Anything else you can think of that we need to lift up? You remember the churches that we're praying for? And um, Pastor Daryl, yeah. Pastor um, Daryl at Calvary. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, Mount Zion. And Pastor Tamara. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Jerry and the Chancel Choir. Jerry and the Chancel Choir. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you for great things that are happening in our lives. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you, uh, God, for your faithfulness in 2021, even though in many ways it was a difficult year. But God, we also uh, thank you that we can look forward to your uh, faithfulness in 2022. Um, we thank you for... Um, new babies in uh, uh, 2021. We thank you for uh, Carson and Graham and Odessa. Uh, Lord, uh, we just give you praise for uh, additions uh, to this part of your body. Uh, God, I, I pray uh, for, for Mark, uh, for the boys, uh, for our church for the community as uh, we're mourning the loss of Jan Wilson. Uh, Lord, I, I pray, uh, God, that you would just uh, minister uh, as uh, visitation takes place, as the funeral takes place, minister in, in a powerful way. And uh, Lord, for all these things, we'll give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are, uh, Blake and I are going to be preaching a two month series. Uh, so, uh, basically, like a nine sermon series. And uh, we're calling it the Heart of John. Uh, what we're looking at is John uh, chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16. And, uh, and so, uh, if you look, if you have a red letter Bible and you look at those chapters, Almost all of that is in red because Jesus is just teaching his disciples on the night he was betrayed. The only really similar section of scripture uh, to that would be 
uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Anybody know what that contains? Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount. And, and so uh, we want to start off today uh, with uh, John chapter 13, starting with verse 1. I'll read down uh, through verse 17. And uh, this is on the night that Jesus was betrayed, and it's the Last Supper. Uh, that, that's the setting of this. And, and Jesus, I, I think, is wanting to teach his disciples. Um, you, you know, he, he's trying to pour into them and, and give them uh, lessons that they're going to need to know for when he is no longer with them in a, in a physical sense. Uh, also, uh, he teaches them, he's a rabbi, so he teaches them not just by precept or, or not just verbally, but he teaches them by example. Uh, rabbis tried to uh, help their disciples to live the way they lived uh, and, and do the things that they did. So, uh, John uh, 13, starting with verse 1. It was just before pa the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love, both here at the Last Supper and then also uh, on the cross. Um, the evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, the son of uh, Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said, uh, Peter always has to say something, right? Uh, he came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't realize what I'm doing now, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no part in me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath only needs to wash their feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I've done for you. And I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Uh, bow with me for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray that in these next few minutes that you would speak to us through your word. God, may it come alive to us. And God, for this, we'll give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so uh, we've got uh, the disciples all going to this room where they're uh, sharing the meal. Uh, two of them had uh, gone early to prepare the meal. And uh, one of the things that we know from the other gospel accounts that is going on is, uh, it, particularly in Luke uh, chapter 22, is they've been arguing about who's the greatest. Uh, you, you know, they've been going back and forth about that. Who, uh, which is the greatest of the, of the 12? Uh, you know, they've got... Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, uh, the sovereign head over everything right there, and they're arguing about which of them is the greatest. And uh, actually, I think at, at this time, they're still imagining that Jesus is going to set up an earthly kingdom, uh, that he is going to um, 
uh, you, you know, take charge, throw the Romans out, and, and they're kind of jockeying for power uh, in the kingdom. Actually, in Matthew chapter uh, 20, uh, we have James and John and James and John's mother uh, come to Jesus, and uh, the mother uh, basically bows in worship and says, uh, Lord, I want you to do uh, something for me. And Jesus says, what do you want? Uh, it's always good to ask uh, what somebody wants before you say yes. And, and so uh, she says, I want uh, one of my sons to sit on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your power. And uh, Jesus basically says, you don't know what you're asking. The other ten disciples uh, find out that uh, James and John and, and their mom have pulled this power play in there. Uh, according to the scripture in, in the NIV, they're indignant, which means uh, they're really upset uh, that they were doing this. And, uh, and Jesus basically says, I have uh, come to serve, not to be served. And he teaches them this lesson again. Now, they've been arguing about which one's the greatest, and, and guess what? Uh, uh, when it came to the custom of washing feet, which was supposed to be do, done uh, by the lowest servant in, in the serving order, in the pecking order, or by the youngest person in the group, none of the disciples were willing to wash each other's feet. It, it was the custom to wash feet as you came in for a meal because uh, they wore sandals. Uh, if you... Israel is very dusty. Uh, you, you, you know, feet would get dirty, and it was kind of a grimy job to do. Uh, and and James didn't want to wash John's feet. Uh, John didn't want to wash Peter's feet. Peter didn't want to wash Andrew's feet. Nobody would volunteer uh, to wash the feet. Jesus sees this, and the Scripture tells us that he got up uh, took off his outer clothing, uh, took a, a pitcher and a basin and a towel and began to make himself, uh, began to wash feet around the circle. And when he got to Peter, I don't know whether Peter was kind of across the room from him. Uh, Peter had seen what Jesus was doing and Peter said, no, I, you're never going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, you know, as we read, uh, you know, I need to wash your feet or you'll have no part in me. And uh, Jesus got uh, clear around. He put back on his clothes, uh, sat back down. And he said, he basically was giving them, giving them a lesson, an example in servanthood. You Remember I said rabbis taught by example and also uh, by precept or, or, or by uh, words verbally. Uh, and Jesus was giving them an example that uh, none of them were too good to serve each other. In, in fact, Jesus says, uh, as I have served you, you should serve one another. As I have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. And uh, it, was a, it was a lesson that at least uh, stuck in uh, the Apostle John's mind. Remembered it, I think, for the rest of his life. I, I, I think the other disciples did as well. Um, from this passage, uh, th there are some lessons that I, I think that we can learn. Uh, the first is this, that following Jesus, if we're going to follow Jesus, if Jesus is our master, if he's our rabbi, if he's our Lord, uh, we need to serve. We need to be uh, serving because Jesus came uh, not to be served, but to serve. And, and we need to serve as well. Now, each of us have different gifts. We serve in different ways. Uh, some of us are... Um, Bob's, a, uh, Bob's a great singer. If I tried to sing like Bob, it wouldn't work. Uh, I, and... In terms of playing guitar, I have no rhythm. Uh, so I can't play like Blake. Uh, you, you know, 
we all have our different areas uh, of, of serving. Uh, but all of us, all of us are called to serve. And, uh, and that's one of the ways, our service is one of the ways that God's love is expressed in the world. Uh, a second thought about this is that seeing a need is, when we see a need, it is often God's invitation for us to get involved in helping meet the need. Um, you remember uh, the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew, Mark, uh, the feeding of the 5,000 is one of those miracles that is recorded in all four Gospels. Uh, not many of the miracles are recorded in all four Gospels, but uh, that's one of them. And in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, we have the disciples coming to Jesus after Jesus has uh, taught basically all day. And they say to, the disi uh, they say to Jesus, uh, you need to do something about this crowd. You need to send them away because uh, they need to eat. They, they saw the need, and <laughs> then what did Jesus say to them? You remember? This is when you respond. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. <laughs> and, you know, one of the disciples says, how can we feed these folks? Eight months wages wouldn't cover the bill. Uh, and then Andrew says, here's a little boy's lunch, five five." Loaves of bread and, and two fish. Uh, it was, the loaves of bread were probably no bigger than our hand. Uh, the two fish were uh, probably more like that than like that. Uh, it was basically a, a Galilean equivalent to a Happy Meal. And they say, what is that? Uh, uh, Andrew says, what is that among so many? And, and Jesus says to them, uh, give, give me the meal. And Jesus takes the meal, takes the bread, gives thanks for the little that they've got, and then it is multiplied to feed them. 5,000 plus women and children. Uh, but they saw the need, and then Jesus empowered them to help meet the need. Uh, none of them uh, fed that crowd all by themselves. Uh, they, they worked together as a team. The 12 disciples worked together as a team to meet the need. I, I think when we see a need, uh, you, you know, we need to get involved, but we also need to recruit some others to help us. We are better together. Uh, we, we serve better together than we do apart. So, uh, uh, seeing um, uh, needs uh, is often God's invitation for us to help meet that need. Serving like Jesus uh, means serving others who don't get it or don't understand. You, you know, they really didn't, Peter didn't understand what the Lord was doing. Uh, actually, Jesus said, uh, you don't understand now, but later on you will. And uh, uh, when we serve uh, you know, we'll serve some folks that don't get it and don't understand, uh, but we need to serve anyway. Uh, when we serve like Jesus, we'll serve some people with ugly attitudes. Uh, but just because they have ugly attitudes doesn't disqualify them. Uh, if they have ugly attitudes, we need to uh, serve them anyway. Uh, sometimes we run into that... Um, uh, with the emergency assistance or the, uh, or, or the food pantry. Uh, you, you know, uh, there will be uh, what we like to call around AUMC uh, extra grace required folks, EGRs. And, uh, and we have to uh, go ahead and serve anyway. Uh, I, one of the things that struck me in this, uh, thinking about how Jesus served, uh, is Jesus served even though 
these guys around the circle had disappointed him and were going to disappoint him. As he went around the circle washing the feet, he came to Judas. And he washed Judas' feet anyway. Came to Peter. And he knew that Peter was going to deny him. And he washed Peter's feet anyway. Uh, actually, I think all the disciples disappointed him. Uh, he was trying to get this lesson on serving uh, across to them for three years. And he's at the last night of his active earthly ministry, and they're still not getting it. They're a lot like us, aren't they? Sometimes we just don't get it. And, uh, and, and so Jesus served even though... He was disappointed. And we need to continue to serve even when we're disappointed. I think he continued. Jesus served despite the opportunity to serve being an interruption sometimes. You remember Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, you know, the synagogue ruler's daughter. And uh, he's interrupted by a, a woman who reaches out and touches uh, the hem of his garment. And uh, he stops and he ministers to her. Uh, that, was, uh, that was an interruption. Uh, he's uh, crossing uh, through Jericho and, and a blind guy named Bartimaeus hollers out to him. Uh, yeah, Lord have mercy. And Jesus stops the parade and basically calls uh, Bartimaeus to himself and says, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus takes time to minister. I, sometimes it's hard to view interruptions as um, divine appointments. But I believe that interruptions can indeed be divine appointments. And we have a choice about whether we're going to uh, go ahead and minister or uh, whether we're just going to uh, pass on. I, I think that that's what was happening with the Good Samaritan uh, story. Uh, you remember the guy uh, gets beat half to death? Uh, he's, uh, uh, Jesus told this story. He's robbed and, and he's left by the side of the road and the priest sees him and walks on, goes on to the church meeting. The Levite sees him and goes on. But the Samaritan seizes the opportunity to serve. He binds up his wounds. He um, uh, puts oil on his, uh, on, on his wounds, uh, bandages him up, uh, takes him to an inn, and, and pays uh, for him to be taken care of. He took the opportunity to serve. Um, and so uh, serving uh, Jesus means uh, serving despite uh, what we would consider interruptions to our schedule. Um, according to Matthew chapter 25, that's the parable of the sheep and the goats. And uh, Jesus says uh, that the king on the, day of, uh, on the day of judgment will say to the sheep, uh, you have, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was Hungry, you gave me food to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was uh, sick, uh, you uh, cared for me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And uh, the sheep say, oh, when did we see you in all those situations? And Jesus said, as much as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. So when we serve others, we need to bear in mind in, in kind of a mysterious way, uh, a way that we might not understand. When we serve others, especially the last, the least, and the lost, we're really serving Jesus. And, uh, and one of the things, if I can keep that in mind, uh, that helps me, uh, I think, serve better. Um, and then, uh, right at the end, Jesus says this. Uh, he says, uh, I've set you an example that you should do as I've done to you. And then in verse 17, it says this. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed 
if you do them. The blessing comes not just with knowing it in our head. We would all agree uh, around this circle that we're all called to serve and that uh, serving Jesus means serving each other. We would understand that in our heads. But that head knowledge needs to make uh, its way to our heart and it also needs to make it its way to our hands. We need to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So, uh, Camille, that means that means that uh, you know that you, you need to serve Christian. You know that in your head, but living it out is hard to do. Uh, you, you know that. Um, that is a lesson that Jesus tries to get across. But the blessing comes, the blessing comes when we actually do it, when we serve. Uh, not only are, are we, are, not only are those that we serve blessed, but we're blessed as well. I actually think that when we are willing to serve, it invites God's presence and God's grace. Uh, in the three other Gospels, we have uh, the story that we'll re, uh, tell again uh, about communion. Jesus takes the bread and he breaks it and he says, this is my body broken for you. He takes the cup and he shares it with his disciples and he says, take and drink for this is my blood which is shed for you. In John's Gospel, that part of the Last Supper isn't there. I think what one of the lessons that we can learn from that not being there is that there is something sacramental, something uh, that uh, happens with God's grace being poured out upon us uh, when we serve. Not only is God's grace poured out on us when we serve, but God's grace is, uh, we become a channel of God's grace to others. And, uh, so we're going to uh, remember that we need to serve today. And we're going to pass a uh, cup and, and bread. And we'll all uh, take together. So uh, once you get the bread and, and, and the cup open, uh, wait uh, to receive the bread, wait to receive the cup until we can all do it at the same time. Would you bow with me for prayer? Lord Jesus, I thank you that we get to serve alongside you. Uh, and that we get to serve uh, alongside each other. Uh, God, I, I thank you for this lesson that you taught your disciples so long ago uh, about the need for us to serve each other in practical uh, ways that meet needs. And, and Lord, I... I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon these gifts of the bread and the cup. May they be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be the body of Christ for a world that desperately needs you, that needs to be served. And God, these things we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And the scripture tells us that he broke it. And he said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. That same night, Jesus took the cup. And he said to his disciples, this is my blood, which is shed for you. For the forgiveness of sins, take and drink. Thank you.
you, Lord, for what you've done for us. When I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray, Find in me thine all in all. Thank you for worshiping today, everyone. You have a great Sunday. Amen. Perfect. Perfect. Whew. We see you tonight.